the Lord is my shepherd, shall not walk. Makes me to lie down in green house. Leads me beside the sea of waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of For his name's sake. Then do I walk through the battle of the shadow of death. I fear no evil. I walk in my staff.
Therefore, comfort one another with these words. With these words. Truly, truly, I say unto you, I was coming and now eat. When the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself, and has given him authority to execute judgment, because he is the Son of Man. I do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming. But all who are in the tomb will hear his voice. And come forth those who have done good to the resurrection of life. And those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. But if in this life we who are in Christ have only hope, we are of all men most to be pitied. But in fact Christ has been raised from the dead. The first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has came come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall be made alive. John said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth passed away and the sea was no more. And I saw that holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling of God is with me. He will dwell with them. They shall be his people. And God himself will be with them. He will wipe away. He will wipe away every tear from their life. Death shall be no more, neither shall there be more, nor crying, nor pain anymore. For the former things have passed away. But he who conquers shall have this heritage. And I will be his God, and he shall be. My son, hold to his hand. Come on and clap those hands. God's son changing hand. This is a homegoing celebration of life that has been well lived. And I share God's son changing hand.
that we hear, amen, to celebrate, amen, amen, our brothers, amen, life, amen, a homegoing celebration, amen, Pastor Bobby Huckley, amen, son and the family have provided a program, amen, and I believe in doing what I've been instructed and asked to do, because people don't have to ask you to do anything, it's a blessing to be, amen, asked to do anything, so I'm going to respect this time and do what I've been asked to do. Amen. But we're still going to have a great time. Make that right. Amen. 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 So let's continue to keep our, this time in our prayers to, amen, my Jenkins and to Sabrina and the sisters and the rest of the family. Amen. Son, we're here for you. Amen. We want you to know that. But the family has provided a program for us and, amen, we're going to, amen, uh, all the program has been outlined. Amen. And I don't believe in just getting up every time somebody get up with it. Amen. So we're going to go through, amen, our program. And as your name appear on the program, amen, then you come on up and do what you've been asked to do. Amen. 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 Do what you've been asked to do. Amen. Amen. As your name appear on the program. Amen. 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 So, amen. We've had the musical prelude. Prelude and the procession, and so the scripture reading will be coming from the Old Testament from the pastor of this church, St. John Baptist Church, Reverend H. S. White. Amen. He will bring the Old Testament, followed by the New Testament, will be coming from Minister Adams Brandon. Amen. He will come at that time. And then we will have prayer coming from Pastor Duran Paul, and then a selection. Amen will be coming from Sister Contella Warren. Amen. And then we'll come back. Amen. So as your name appear, please, ma'am, please, sir, come on and do what you've been instructed and asked to do. Amen. Come on and bless the Lord and give him another hand clap of praise. And let me see Pastor Warren as he comes with Without payment. 
He who conquers shall have this inheritance. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Yeah. Renee, we love you. And we know you right now with your father. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. 
Amen. Thank you. Amen, Mr. Amen. Ms. Warren. Amen. Amen. I'm sending want to thank you, Pastor White. Amen for that. Amen. Old Testament. Ms. Strippian, Minister Brandon, Amen. Aramis, Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. And to Pastor Durham Paul. Amen. 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 Set up that timber. Amen. Amen. Come on and give him another hand clap of praise. Amen. He's good like that. Amen. 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 We got further instructions on the program. Amen. And I'm going to be seated. Amen. Amen. Still having church, ain't that right? Amen. 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 So we're going to have remarks. Notice it says two minutes. Amen. Two minutes. And at the remarks, the obituary reading will be read silently. And amen. Uh, 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 musician might want to play a little song music. We'll read that silently. And then selection will be coming from Amen. Evangelist Sabrina Roberts. Amen. She will come at that time with the selection. Amen. And then after that, let us pray for the man of God that he will stand boldly. Amen. And declare what thus said the Lord and give this. Family, a word of comfort. Amen. The pastor of the Liberty Temple Christian Church, right there, 6400 Rock Ridge Road in the heart of Stone Mountain, Georgia. Amen. Pastor Daniel Hubley Jr. will come and deliver the eulogy to this family. Let us pray with him and pray for him that the Lord will use him mightily. Then, after that, we will have a family tribute coming from Trent Bromell. Amen. And Bromell. And then, after that, we will have the acknowledgments coming from the Mackenzie Funeral Home, and then interment will be the St. John Baptist Church Cemetery, the Star of Alabama. Amen. Right behind this church here. Amen. Amen. So let us come in that order. Please, ma'am. Please, sir. Notice remarks. Amen. Two minutes, please. Amen. Come right on. Let me just say before they come, amen. I want to honor all of the clergy, those that are in. Uh, in the uh, pulpit up here, as well as those that are, amen, uh, in the audience. Some of we want to honor you as to Pastor of this great church, Pastor White, amen, of the St. John Baptist Church. Thank you so much. Come around. Amen. This is the day that the Lord hath made me. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm Dr. Dinah Marks and I bring you greetings from the All-America City of DeSoto, Texas. I am the best niece, the favorite niece of Reverend Bobby Hubley. And if he was alive, he'd tell you that. So. But they know it. You all already know that. But I serve as city council for the city of DeSoto. So at this time, I'd like to read to you the resolution that I brought with me all the way from DeSoto, Texas. So if you bear with me for just a moment. DeSoto, Texas, resolution of respect and condolence for Reverend Bobby Hughley. Whereas Reverend Bobby Hughley was born on July 7, 1941 in Macon County, Alabama to Cleveland. And Ida Sveen Guys Hughley, he attended Macon County School System and later graduated at Harbor Bible College. He married the love of his life, May Jean Merchant Hughley. In 1967, and I had something to do with that, too. <laughs> and if he was alive, he'd tell you that, too. And relocated to Atlanta, Georgia in 1970, and whereas Reverend Bobby Hughley joined St. John Baptist Church at an early age, and after some time, he served as superintendent. Reverend Bobby Hughley became a member of Mount Carmel Baptist Church, where he was licensed and ordained as a minister between 1988 and 1989. Over the course of his membership, Reverend Bobby Hughley continued to be of service 
as an associate pastor, member of the Usher Board, member of the Church Building Fund, vice chairman and chairman of the Junior and Senior Deacon Board. And whereas Reverend Bobby Hughley made a living for his family as a diesel mechanic for 31 years, he adored his family and was dedicated to his purpose of preaching the word of God and very passionate about leading people to Christ, Reverend Bobby Hughley pastored many churches in the surrounding Atlanta area and later became the founding pastor of New Galilee Baptist Church. Amen. One of his many enjoyments in life was enjoying his horses and watching Friday Night Smackdown. Yeah. Whereas, <laughs> whereas Reverend Bobby Hughley leads to, to uh, his legacy of endearing love, strength, and wisdom to all that were blessed to encounter his presence. He leaves to cherish his precious memory, his wife, Meijing Merchant Hughley, his daughters, Sabrina Hughley Roberts, Amtria Hughley Rommel, and Cassandra Hughley. He has eight grandchildren. That's Trent Thomas, I'm sorry, Trent Rommel, DeAndre Rommel, Triana Hughley, Nyla Aramis Brannon, Taylor, Gerald Thomas, Gary Cook. Junior, Aaliyah Rommel, and Ermia Moon, five great-grandchildren, Amaya, I'm sorry, please forgive me for that. these names, you know, as they get younger, the names and the pronunciation get, so please forgive me for that, Amaya. Five great-grandchildren, and his brother, Winston Hewlett. He was preceded in death by nine siblings. Sisters Willie Mae Levitt, Sally K. Curry, Irene Dozier, Minnie Lee Brooks, Stella Mall King. Now here are his brothers. My dad, Cleveland Hughley Jr. Oh. Oh. Herman Hughley. And then there was Walter Edward Hughley. And then there was Daniel Hughley Sr. A host of us nieces, there was lots of nephews, cousins, and friends. So now, therefore, I, who is our mayor, Rachel L. Proctor, by the authority vested in me, as the mayor of the All-America City of DeSoto, do humbly present this resolution to extend our prayers and our heartfelt sympathy to the family and friends of Reverend Bobby Hughley. And in witness whereof, I have set my hand and caused the seal of the city of DeSoto, Texas to be affixed this 15th day of April, 2023. <coughs> our mayor is Reverend, I'm sorry, Reverend, that's on my mind. Rachel L. Proctor is our mayor. It was attested by our secretary, Alicia Thomas, where I serve as city council member. So to the family, to our family, we know that there's a long road ahead, but God is still in control. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. There's much more that I could say, but I know I've been held to two minutes, so. I'm going to go ahead and sit down, but I think my family knows how I feel about my family. Everybody knows how I feel about my uncles especially. So thank you all so very much for all that you poured into me. I'm going to sit down before y'all have to put me down. Okay? Thank you all so much. Amen. Thank you so much, Lord. Thank you to the pastor and to this beautiful family right here. This is a praying family. And for this past week, I've learned that with Uncle Bobby, I'm Brenda Steele. I live in Atlanta, and that's how I've always known him as Uncle Bobby. He married into our family. And when he married into our family, we all became one. 
He raised us whenever he saw us. He talked to us. You know, Uncle Bobby would say, uh, what's that opening saying? Uh-huh. All right now. All right now. That's what he was saying. That was his way of saying hello to you. Everybody knows that. They, I figured they would help me out there. And it, it, it's just a, a wonderful blessing to be here and to see all the love and that resolution that was just read was one of the best ones I've read, I've heard. Because they mentioned the family. And they, they mentioned so many personal things in that resolution. So, Mayjean, we want you to know how much, you know how much we love you. You've been so strong for all these beautiful girls that Bobby had, his daughters, his granddaughters, and now his son-in-laws and, and the family, the merchant family. If my mother was here, she's not here, but she would be here if she was here. Mm -hmm. And we represent Big Mama, Mayjean, uh, Bridget, Robin, all of us are here for you. So the family is it's like two separate families, Bobby family and our family, but we're really one family, one big family, because that's how Bobby treated us. He was always right there in the doorway when we came to greet us, always there. So I will miss him a whole lot, his horses, his beautiful truck, and just his, his life, his tall, everything. So thank you. And, and family, you did a beautiful job on this program. You're doing a great, they did, you all. This is beautiful, something that they would have for a long, long time. And I thank God for y'all. I thank y'all for opening it up like this. You all should have been there Thursday, but those, they opened it up to the poll. They let anybody talk, as long as they wanted to talk about Bobby. So thank you, thank you.
And so we've been with his family. We never had a quarrel. We never had nothing but joy in our heart and love for each other. Amen. That's the way it has been ever since 1972. Amen. And here it is, 2023. Amen. And it's still, they are still my extended family. Amen. And I love each and every one of them. And one thing about it, we used to go on trips to Bahamas and different places like that. And when we go, Reverend Hubert and Sister Hubert, they always would be all together. And Sister Hubert had a habit of catching Reverend Hubert around his bed. <laughs> she wouldn't let go of that leg. Every time he get ready to go up some steps, she would catch your leg. He said, hey, Jean, turn lose my leg. <laughs> but I just want to say, truly, God is good. And you know what? And to see these beautiful young ladies, all our children grew up together. And, and, and this one right here, my son, he was the oldest in my two daughters there. But this one right, they get ready to get on the school bus. You know, my son wouldn't have said too much. You know, he was nice and he's in quiet. But this one right here, tell them children on the school bus, it says, you bet not bother my brother. I will get you good. And she would too. She would fight for him. And, and I just thank God. We had such a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful relationship with this family. And we love you all so dearly, the grandchildren and all. I, you know, I probably don't know all of you all, but, but I, I know all of you because I, we moved to the South and, and, and that's where I'm still at. And so, but anyway, I know you. I know you. <laughs> and, and I tell you, God bless you all and continue staying in, in God's house and continue keeping Jesus in your heart because that's what you do. Your granddaddy, your dad, that's what he wanted you all to do. Yes. Because that was yes. his name. Amen. Jesus Christ. And sister, God knows you know I love you. I love you. And I just want you to say, be a good courage. Yes. And he will strengthen your heart. Yes. Knowledge and you know, 
that skills and things. And Bobby left and <coughs> they moved to Georgia. But he always would come home. Amen. Always would come home. You know, he didn't forget home. <coughs> he didn't forget the church neither. A lot of things we've done here at the church, a lot of what in the family will contribute. Amen. So we're just thankful for the Hebrew family. For uh, they, uh, they are a pillar of this community and of this church. Amen. Amen. And we're just, just so grateful to have known Bob. Uh, as I visit Atlanta, Bobby and Sister May Jean, we go out to eat, uh, eat. It wasn't a Friday snack down. <laughs> but we went out. We had fun and reminisce and talk about different things. But we truly want this Reverend Bobby here. Yes, yes. And we put say to the family and Gene, pray God's strength in you that you will need to grow stronger to the children. Sandra, I'll see you. You're my neighbors. So I'll see you. All the rest of the girls and family. We pray God will strengthen you all in times like this. You do. Even though you're the last one, brother. You're not alone. You've got a lot of nieces, nephews, and cousins, and everything. You've got all of us. Amen. 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 And as I go to my seat, I'm not, I'll, I'll try to say it. This is one of Brother Hebrew's song and one of Bobby's song. Bow down. But this man, mm -hmm. 
gave me my first opportunity to preach outside of the state of Alabama as he invited me to come to, to Union Springs Baptist Church in Rutledge, Georgia. And there he treated me with great joy and pleasure to allow me to preach at his church. And since that time, he has been one who has poured into me so that I can stand today and do the Lord's work. Let me tell you, it is so important that we know how to pour into other people so that when this life is over, the work of the Lord and your work can continue to live on. He's not dead. He's just sleeping because he has poured himself into other people who will continue to live on. May God bless you. May God keep you is our prayer. And may we always remember him as an example of how to live for Christ. Amen. Come on and bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Give God another praise. Amen. Amen for the life of our dear beloved. Amen. Brother, one that was totally committed, devoted, dedicated to the work of the ministry. Amen. Pastor Bobby Hughley. Come on and let's celebrate his life one more time. Stand down, Peter. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hey Jane, amen. We're going to continue to keep you in our prayer. Amen. Our brother here, amen, he's going to play some soft music, amen, as we do our obituary silently, amen. And after that, we'll be favored by a uh, solo uh, selection coming from Evangelist Sabrina Roberts, the oldest daughter of Pastor Bobby, amen. And after that, let us, amen, be prepared to hear from the man of God at that hour, Pastor Daniel Hughley as he will come and deliver words of comfort, amen, to this family, amen, to give them strength, amen, to all that are here this afternoon. So let us pray with him and pray for him. So after the obituary, let us receive um, Evangelist Roberts as he will come and favor us with us all. Amen.
the way some men act today, Amen. that they deserve a woman. Amen. But I thank God that I yeah. have the example yes, Lord. of what it's supposed to be. I'm not going to keep talking about that. Dad knew I loved him. His last, his last days that he was feeling bad, I was there. I took care of my dad the best that I could. And if I could bring him back today, even though he may not want to, I'd be like, Daddy, just one more time. Just one more time. But I, I, I just thank God. Thank God. Hallelujah. They jealous. <laughs> yeah, they, they jealous because I, I think Diana is his favorite niece, she said. I was the favorite dog. <laughs> but we're going to bless the Lord right now. I'm going to sing one of Daddy, Daddy's favorite songs. And I'm going to move out the way so the word can go forth. But I want you to remember that God is the head of all of our lives. Amen. Whether you believe that and operate in that or yeah. not, oh, but yeah. he is the head of our lives. Amen. 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 I've got a mind to live for Jesus. Where's he, Andre? All of my days. I've got a mind to live for Jesus all of my days. Oh, yes, I know when order to win this fight.
just a blessing. Everybody praise the Lord. you know, 
a great eulogy for a great man of God. But today, uh, I'm going to give the eulogy that I think about on Wednesday, on Thursday. I didn't say that I wanted to sit back and just want to hear and listen because I knew I was going to be here today. But hey, I want to, I, I want to add some of my ex thoughts and experience with Uncle Bobby. I told him when my father died in July the 30th, uh, 2020, and I said, Uncle Bobby, you know, my dad is gone now. And he said, so I'm going to have to give you a new title now. And I called him. He said, what's that? I said, Uncle Daddy. <laughs> and guess what he said, family? All right, all right, all right. <laughs> and that's just like Uncle Bobby, you know, it's such great memories of him. And that's what we got to hold on to. Everybody got him. If he's your, if you, if his favorite niece, that means you might have one more memory than I do. <laughs> his favorite daughter, you might have a couple more. But that was because you're older, and I think you might have me about one or two. But yet, it's still time with him, but we will never forget. But my fondest memory with my Uncle Bobby was when I was building a deck for him and Aunt May Jean. And we had to go to Home Depot to get some material. So we go down to Home Depot to get some material. And me and Uncle Bobby almost got in a fight. <laughs> we got all the material. We had to get 30, I know to this very day, we had to get 30, 12 foot, 2 by 10s. Real heavy. We had loaded them on a cart. He was paying for them. I went and got my truck and brought it down to where we load up at. And we were pushing them out. It was taking all that we could to push them out. And then all of a sudden, some guy come in a big old truck, blocked the door he was at, put it against my truck so close we couldn't get to it. And I asked the gentleman, sir, we could get ready to load our stuff on my truck. And he took the truck and he cussed me up and down, left and right. Hey, we were my this is, you know. And I was on the other side, I guess Bob heard the commotion. And he came around there. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> you know, I got all the do it. And, you know, he come to find out, we, you know, we had a few words back and forth, but I want to put this, this disclaimer in there. That was not Reverend Bobby Hughley or Pastor Hughley. <laughs> that was Uncle Bobby and Junior. But we, he got a little heated for a bit because we had paid, he hadn't even paid for his stuff. So in a long story short, and then so another guy come out, couldn't find out, the guy that was trying to play, he, he really wanted to jump in my case. And, but he wasn't even the one that owned the truck. Oh, wow. Lo and behold, it belonged to somebody else. And so he came around and said, sir, I'm so sorry, but this guy works for me. But in a long story short, we did get it loaded. And then on our way home, he said, Junior, I thought I was about to call Gene and tell him to come down there and get me and you out of jail. <laughs> and I said, you know what, well, that's an uncle daddy right there. Not only will he fight for you, but he'll fight with you too. And then get you out of jail again. <laughs> so, you know, I loved Uncle Bobby. When I was ordained a deacon, he was there. When I was ordained a minister, he was there. His name was on my ordination papers. You know, it's just been a lot. So many things have been through. And not only me, we all, as family, that's part of the thing we got to hold on to, those precious memories. That's something nobody can take from us. Amen? So today, I just, I'm just i just excited uh, about seeing everyone here to help celebrate this great man of God. He's, he's, he has served well. Uh, and I love Uncle Bobby. And uh, we celebrate his life, we celebrate his legacy, and it starts with Aunt Jean, Sabrina, Armstrong, Saint Cassandra, all his grandchildren, all his great grandchildren. You know, that's part of the legacy. So we can thank God without him, we will not have them to continue his legacy. So we thank God today for this celebration. But if you know Aunt Uncle Bobby, he'd be saying, all right, Junior, enough about me. Get him some words. <laughs> because he loved the word of God as well. So I, today, I want you to, to eulogize our uncle out of the book of Matthew, chapter 25. I'm going to read verses 14 through 21. And the word says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country 
who called his own servants to deliver his goods to them. Uh -huh. And to the one he gave five talents, uh -huh. and to another two, yeah. and to another one, mm -hmm. and to one according to his own ability, he gave each one. And immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. But he who had received one went and dug it and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he who had received the five talents came and brought five more talents to him. Look, I have given, I have gained five more talents besides them. And I'm going to get to verse 2. And his Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. And he said the same thing as well to the one that had two and when it made four. But that one that buried it, you know, he ended up taking his time and called him an unfruitful servant. And he cast him out of darkness. But from that, I want us to focus on verse 21. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. And my eulogy for my uncle today is, well done, Reverend Bobby Hewitt. Well done. From all of our the eulogies and stuff that I've heard so far, amen, we can see that he lived a good life. Uncle Bobby did live his life according to the word. If you ever spent more than five minutes talking to him, you'll find that out real quick. But he had such wisdom, and he didn't mind sharing what he knew with anyone that was willing to hear. In, those, in his favorite song, I got a mind to live right. He lived that way. Yeah. And if, you, if, you, if you've been, been attributed more than two times, you also know his favorite hymn. Uh -huh. Charge to keep. Uh -huh. And he lived that way. He kept that charge. Amen. He fulfilled his call. He did what his master had for him to do. His life, his work, you know, it speaks for him. He do have a well done testimony. Uh huh. So we can see here from the story of the parables yeah. that it was given to us, for us, even though we're talking about Uncle Bobby's life, what can we draw from Uncle Bobby's life? Mm -hmm. I've heard many people say how he has impacted us from Thursday up to now, how he's made a change in my life. Mm -hmm. Then if he made that change, then we're going to live the same life. Mm -hmm. Amen? We should see the same light. Yeah. It's one thing to say, I hear you, Uncle Bobby. But it's nothing to do what I'm about to say to you. Amen? Amen. Amen. And that's the whole key to the parable. Oh, yeah. It's really not about the money. It's about us today. And Jesus spake this parable to let them know that there's also a charge on our life. That's right. yeah. It's good as some of the Bible say, a charge to keep I have on the God to glorify. But am I keeping a charge? Right. Am I glorifying God? Am I obeying the master's will? Oh Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. One thing I know about Bobby, he don't like wasting his time. You know, he was we ain't rich on patience. <laughs> we get tired, we just tired enough. Yeah. <laughs> you know, something got it, and that's the way he lived his life. And Jesus spoke this parable unto them. You know, that not only the fact that it is that, you know, we have a charge on our life, that what is that charge? It is to let us know. That we have to become a disciple. Yeah. And then also to make disciples. That is the only way we can be profitable for God here on earth. Amen? Amen. I know it's nice to come to church. It's nice. To, but are we being a prophet? God has blessed us all. He blessed each one of those with a talent. He gave one five, one two, and one one. And here's the thing about it. He gave them according to their ability. He did not yeah. expect. For the one that he gave five, I mean the one, to do what the five did. Yeah. He gave us to do what we're able to do. The charge yeah. of all of our life is yeah. according to the ability that we have to complete it. Yeah. So whatever God has for me to do, I can't do it. Uh -huh. If I want to do it. Uh -huh. And that is what he's trying to get us to see here. Because our reward is going to be judged 
on the works that we do. Amen. May the works I've done speak for me. How many times have you heard that song before? And trust me, church, one day they shall. Just like Uncle Bobby here. His works are speaking for him. Why? They're speaking through his children. They're speaking through his friends. All the comments, those things are speaking to us on today. And here's the second point about that. We saw in verse 19, he gave that the people with five, two, and one a lot of time to make a profit. But it also said in verse 19 that one day the Lord came back to reckon with them. So what he wants to know that one day he will come back to judge us according to the works done in our body. Amen? But what are you going to say when he comes back? But there's only one response that we want to hear from God, and that is what? Well done. Not good and faithful, sir. Look at the reward. You've been faithful over a few things. Now come on up higher. Now we know we say come up, you know where you're not going, you're not going down. Come on up. And I will. You will be rewarded for doing well done. There's a great reward that we have here. And he has kept his charge all the way to the end. Yeah. He has served his age, hasn't he well? Uh, yes. Uncle Bobby has fulfilled his call, and now he rests. Okay. I know I'm going to miss him. You're going to miss him. Yes. Amen. Amen. But hold on to the memories that our uh, uncle has given us. But in conclusion, I want to do this. This is how I might be a little different in closing out my eulogy today. <laughs> But I want each one of us today to play a part in it. And what I want to do is that when I say who Uncle Bobby was to you personally, I just want you to say, well done, right. whoever he was to you. Amen. Now, hear me when I say it, because some of you stand up, you can't speak for nobody else Amen. but yourself. Right. And a good example is, if I were to say he was a son, if grandmama and granddaddy were here today, they will say what? Well done, son. So, here's how we're going to do this. He was a brother. Well, hold on, now he ain't got one brother here. I got something for everybody. But see, I came to give a eulogy, and that's a tribute to my uncle. And that's all I'm going to focus on. I'm, I, I ain't going to say nothing, but I almost said something Thursday night. I'm not going to go start trying to talk about my toes and everything. I'm going to talk about my uncle. Amen. We ain't going to forget he in the room. Amen. But anyway. But I think he's worthy of this. Yes, worthy. He, was a, he was a brother. Only one man can say Well done. He was a husband. Oh, yes. Well, well. Yeah, I bet it's I bet I hear one more. I ain't going to hate me. Say it again. Well done. Get the six and well done. Wonderful. He was a father. Well done. He was a grandfather. Get, get, get a little bit more. He was an uncle. Well done. Uncle. Well done. Uncle Bob. There you go. He was a friend. Well done. Now everybody, he was a great man of God. Well done. Well done. Hallelujah. And I think the Lord has already said it through. He led me to this text. They let us know that's how he feel about our life. Well done. Well done. My good and faithful servant. Yes. You've been faithful over a few things. Now come on up a little higher. And I will make you ruler over me. But just before I sit down. Everything that everybody has said. That is the last thing that we want to hear God say about us. And it's good for people to say about us. But each one of us. But this is for us. Now what would the people say if you were in that casket? And I asked the same thing. What kind of son 
But what kind of husband, wife, daughter, grandchild, woman of God, man of God, Christian, what would the people say? What's more important? Will God say, well done. And if you don't know for sure, then I'm going to pick up one of the Bobby's line. The doors of the church is open. But you need to come on in. If the Lord cannot say, well done. My good and faithful servant. I borrowed that from him. That one of his moves there. He was good. But it's important. He left a legacy for us to follow. And if we follow his legacy, I do believe that it will be well done. And I'm going to sit down now, but in closing my last tribute, and I ask you really if I could do this as well, is that I want to bring Elder Fred Dudley, and I want us to go out and tribute with his favorite hymn. Um, and then following him is going to be the family tribute from Trent Bromell and then back in the hands of Mackenzie Funeral Home. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Come on together. Amen, Pastor. Amen. 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 Amen.
because I used to love, you know, the kids love skinny jeans. So he said, skinny jeans, come here. What you doing, skinny jeans? Come here. <laughs> he used to love calling me there. Skinny jeans, skinny jeans, skinny jeans. And I just, I just want to thank God. I know I'm, I'm far from perfect, y'all. I'm far from it. But the more I think, God took my granddad away. But it's like he just dispersed in everybody, like in my soul almost. He, just the fact, knowing that he's gone right now today just make me want to push harder, make me want to, you know what I'm saying, live more for God. I'm not. It's just my granddad, y'all. For real. He, he, I don't think y'all understand. He was strong. He was strong and he really blessed me. And it just made me want to give all praise. Trucking industry, 
And every time I came home, he always wanted to know what broke down, how did I fix it, and how did I get home this time. And see, it was a blessing for me to even make it home. And I just want to say it was a time where it was hard. And I called, I called him. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, all right. That's all right. And I told him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I really don't, I don't know if I can keep leaving home right now. And he told me to lean on God. And those words that he said to me, it changed my life. Amen. Yeah. 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 I can see 50, 60, 100, 175 years with this woman right here. Yeah. 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 Because I saw how much that man loved you. Yeah. And see, when that man not say him, he, man, he got, as he got older, he didn't say it as much. But it was, busy. he was powerful. Yeah. He was powerful. Yeah. Yeah. And well, those who don't know, Nala, Nala put all this together. And I just want to show her some gratitude. Amen. Amen. She don't want to do her own horn, but guess what? I'm going to have to do it for her. Good job. Good job. So, Granddaddy, I just want to say from, from Baldy, and that's what he called our, our oldest son, Aiden, because he didn't have no hair in the middle, so he just called him Baldy. <laughs> and from Aiden, that the Brandon family is definitely going to live with your legacy of following God. Thank you for everything.